Hello, in this video, we're going to discuss the vert queue system, how we actually get data to and from our vert IO device. So if you remember, we have in the background, the PCI transport layer, and that's what's going to move the data between one place or another. However, whenever we actually want to make a request or hear something from the device, we go through what's called the vert queue system. Now, if you recall from the last video, the vert queue system has three parts. The first part of the vert queue system is called the descriptor table. So I'm going to abbreviate DESC. The second part is what's called the driver ring. And the last part is called the device ring. Now, there are several revisions of the vert queue specification. So driver ring used to be called the available ring. So you might see it used both ways, whereas the device ring was called the, the used ring. So what we're going to do is in the descriptor table, and I'll show you what the actual descriptor looks like. So the vert queue descriptor looks like this structure here. So it's got four fields, a 64 bit address, that's a physical address, a length, that's the size, the amount. So essentially what you do is you specify the starting address and how much data do you want. Basically starting address length will give you the range of memory addresses that you wanna pass over to the device to make a request. Flags, there's only three flags, next, right, and indirect. We'll see what those mean. And finally, next, if we specify the next flag. So really, we're only using two of these for most purposes, which is the address and the length. When we get to the block device, we actually have to use three descriptors in a chain, and we chain those by using next. And then the next will point to whatever the next portion of the chain is. But once again, we'll cover that later, and you'll probably it'll probably take until we actually look at the block driver before it makes full sense of what we're doing there. So the descriptor table is the actual data. So it's actually where we can get the data. So it's once again, an address and a length. So we go out or whenever we pass that to the device, it will go out, find that data and do something with it. The driver ring. So remember the driver is us. We are the operating system. We are writing the driver, whereas the device is what we're communicating to. So the driver ring, its job is to actually point to the descriptors we want to pass off to the device. So if we take a look at what the driver ring looks like. So once again, remember, it used to be called the available ring. Now it's called the driver ring. And this is the structure of the available ring. So the driver ring. What we have is we have four fields. Once again, we have flags. The only flag we can have is what's called no interrupt. That means remember what this is all about. We're going to hand this off to the device to make a request, make it do something. And remember what's going to happen is the device when it's done is going to interrupt us using the plick, either through 32, 33, 34, or 35. One of those four interrupt whenever we do a plick claim. So if we don't want that to happen, if we're going to pull it instead, we can set the flag to not interrupt it on completion of this request. So for example, if we want a random number, I will put in the descriptor table, here's where I want you to put the random number. So I'll give it an address and the length, how much data I want you to give me. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, point to that descriptor table index. So remember, a table is just an array in terms of C or C++. So the very first index is going to be zero through whatever the size is. And we actually look at the size through what's called Q size, and that's in the PCI common configuration. So the flags in here are just no interrupt. So there's only one flag we can specify. If we put flags to zero, it means we want it to interrupt. The that's the normal way. Then we have this thing called IDX, that's the index. Now the index is actually the index into the ring that we want the device to read. Now this is what's called a free running index. Notice that it's 16 bits because that's important. So the index will start at zero and it will go all the way up to 65535. And then it will naturally wrap back to zero. Why? Because we only have 16 bits to work with. So we'll need a 17th bit if we want to go above 65535. And so we don't have a 17th bit to do that. So it naturally wraps everything back to zero. So this index always runs from zero to 65535. And what this index is, is whenever the device wants to look at something, it's going to look at the index mod the Q size. So remember the Q size is in the configuration. It's actually a read write. We can actually negotiate the size of the Q. And we did that whenever we started negotiate PCI vert IO. Like, okay, we want your Q to be this size. So that was in a sub uh, previous video. So that's what we're talking about with this index. Now the hard part is, is when do we actually mod this 
or when do we actually let it naturally free flow? So the index, the 16-bit index, that will naturally wrap around 65535. Whereas the number that we put inside of this ring index, so remember the square brackets in C is called the subscript operator. The number that we put in there is the size. So the descriptors, the number of descriptors we have inside the table is the same number as the Q size. So if we say the Q size is 1,024, we negotiate that with a device that says, okay, I'll make the Q size 1,024. That means we have 1,024 descriptors available to us. And so that's what this ring is going to tell us here. Now, how does this work? So it's kind of interesting that Q size is used for multiple reasons, but essentially what this contains is notice it's a 16-bit number. Okay, so let's discuss what this would mean. So if I said ring zero equals 10, now generally we're gonna put index mod Q size in here. And I'll explain to you what the difference between the index is and whatever we're setting this equal to. So this right here is the descriptor index. Okay, so what we're doing is the index, the IDX field here that we're talking about inside the driver ring is so that the device knows where we are. So this is a free ring that keeps going in circles and circles and circles. So if you make run request, we're going to make that request at ring number zero. So the first element inside the ring. When we make the next request, it's gonna be at ring number one. And we keep doing that until we get to 655355, and then we go back all the way down to zero. And what we're setting it equal to is that is how we point to the index of the descriptor that we want it to read. So for the first, request we're making here we're saying okay device because this is ring zero i want you to read what is in descriptor number 10. so remember that's index 10 so it's actually the 11th element inside the table since we start at zero so this is telling the device go to descriptor index 10 and read that's where i want you to read the data once again that's an address and that's a length and then you can have flags as well as next so that's what this is doing now this index Let's see how this is going to work. And you'll see this whenever we start managing the dry, uh, the device ring is we will keep an internal index. And then we have this index from the available ring. So we're taking a look at what the device is going to see here. So it keeps its own internal index that only it knows. And then remember, these are shared between the device and the driver. So we have the device and driver, it's index, okay? So at first we initialize both of these equal to zero. So here's what's going to happen. We, whenever we take another descriptor or something like that, we're going to increment this shared index. So what that's going to do is I'm gonna set index equal to one now because I've just incremented. So I used index zero and I incremented the index to one. Now there's a discrepancy between the shared index in the one that's kept internally at the device. Since there's a discrepancy, now the device knows that it needs to go out and resolve that discrepancy. Well, so what it's going to do is it's going to keep reading descriptors. So in this case, it's going to be ring index. It's going to read that descriptor until this index that's inside of the device kept private by the device until that equals the shared index. Whenever they're equal to each other, it's like, all right, I'm all caught up. And we'll do the exact same thing whenever we looked at the use ring. So remember the use ring or the device ring is the opposite. So the driver ring is what we use to make requests to the device. If the device wants to communicate with us, it's going to use the device ring to communicate with us. So we essentially have to do this in reverse. We have to keep our own internal index and then the shared index that we see will be in that device ring. And so if there's a discrepancy between the two, we keep adding our internal one until they're equal to each other. Remember, we don't write anything to the used ring, the uh, device ring. The device does that. We only write things into the driver ring. Um, consequently, on the opposite side of that, the device never writes anything into the driver ring. It only writes things into the device ring. That's how we keep these two things separated. So let's take a look at the device ring. So that's what we have. And then used event just tells us the event index if we have something like that. So that's actually been added to the end of it. That's why it's after the ring, but we're not gonna use that for any of the devices that we use here. So this is what the used ring is going to look like. So the used ring has flags as well. 
no notify index. So that's the shared index that we're talking about. And it has a ring. Now notice the ring, instead of just being an index, is another structure where it contains an ID and a length. So what this means is the ID is going to be the index of the descriptor that it's returning, that it's responding to. So remember, on the previous example, we used descriptor index 10. So if I use descriptor index 10 and I sent that over to the device, it's going to do whatever it needs to do with that descriptor, and now it's going to populate the used ring, and it's going to say, okay, I put, or I just service the request at descriptor index 10. So this ID will be the value 10, and the amount of data that it serviced will be put into length. And so that length can actually be so for example, if I do a block device, say I wanted to read a file. So I say, I want you to go to sector five and read 1,024 bytes. So whatever descriptor I use to make that request is going to be populated inside of here. The number of bytes that it actually serviced is going to be in here. So in that case, I want 1,024 plus the number of bytes that this takes up. So it'll probably be something like 1,028 or something like that, or 1,000, 32 or something like that. So it tells you the total number of bytes that it serviced, not necessarily the number of bytes that you wanted it to do. Because remember, this is generic. This does not understand any of the protocol to the specific device. This understands the protocol specific to vert IO. There's a layer on top of that where we actually have the GPU, the input devices, as well as the entropy devices and block devices. So let's say we wanted to add something to the ring. We want to make a request of a device. So what we're going to do is to make a request of the device, the first thing we have to do is calculate the next descriptor that we have available to us. Now this again is a ring. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at descriptor number zero and we're going to move up to. So remember the last one we have, the size of this entire table is specified in Q size. And just to show you where Q size is located, if we go to the common configuration structure, which is above here, we have this 16-bit field called Q size. So obviously, since it's an unsigned 16-bit field, we can have a Q size of 65,535, I guess, 535 yeah, is the maximum value that we can put in there. So generally, we're not going to, the device won't allow us to do that. So what we're going to do is notice it's read, write. We're going to read from it. It usually gives us the maximum Q size whenever we read from it. And then if we want something smaller, we can put a value in there. And then if we read from it again and it's changed to that smaller value, we know that it accepted it. And so that is what we're talking about when we talk about negotiation. And that's all the way down here inside of these lecture notes. So the Q size minus one is going to be the indices that we have for the descriptor table. So I'm gonna keep an internal clock, just like we are inter internal counter, just like we did with the index so that I know which descriptor we've already used. So in this case, the first one, I'm gonna call it my internal descriptor count or something like that, is gonna start at zero. So whenever I need to make a request, I need to write to the descriptor table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allocate myself whatever this one is. So I'm gonna allocate myself index zero, okay? Then I'm going to increment IDC, the internal descriptor count, and that will now go to one. So if I need another descriptor, I can choose one. And so now that what I'm going to do here is remember we have this index. Sorry, that's the used ring. So we're talking about the driver ring here. Let's see if I can. There we go. So in the device ring, that's what we were talking about. Now let's talk a look, take a look at the driver ring. Remember, we're making a request to the device. So what we're going to do now is place this number into, into this ring. So we have to figure out what index we need to put inside this ring. Well, that's where this is coming to play. So we're gonna put that index inside the ring and we're going to increment it. So IDX will also be incremented. So that has just now created the discrepancy between what the device has seen, which is initialized to zero, based on now what it is now, which is one. So that tells the device that we put something on the ring. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do this case, ring sub index is equal to the IDC. And then what we can do from there is do what we just did up here, IDC, plus equals one, and then we can do index plus equals one. Now remember that is part of a structure, so you'll do something like T arrow or something like that in C. 
So this generic uh, pseudo code in this case. So now that we've done this portion right here, that created the discrepancy. So now what's going to happen is the device, whenever we do a notification, so remember that one of the fields that we were talking about is called this notify configuration. So the notify configuration, what it looks like is this right here. Okay, so we have a memory address. If we write the vert queue number in that memory address, so bar notification capability, there is some math that goes in, some arithmetic that goes into figuring out what memory address we want to write it to. So whenever we write to that memory address, what it's going to do is it's going to interrupt the device itself and say, hey, we just did something. Well, because we negotiated the device, the driver, and the descriptor table with the system, what that's going to do now is it's going to trigger the device to go and look at the driver ring. So then what it does is it has the internal driver ring index internal to the device, and it's got this one that we're sharing. So remember, this is in physical memory. We both have access to this, the device and the driver. Now that it sees that, it's going to service and look at the ring for all the descriptors that we've added to that until index that's internal equals this index that we have here. Now remember, it is circular. So if we added two things, so say our index was one, and its internal one was 65535. Well, it's gonna have to read 65535, which then rolls to zero, and then that rolls to one. So it needs to read three descriptors when we do something like that. So that's actually how we're going to make requests. Now, remember what's going to happen is, as soon as the request has been done, it's going to, to trigger an interrupt through the PLIC, which is an external interrupt. It goes into our operating system. And we, remember, we can configure the PLIC for supervisor mode interrupts. That way there, we don't have to go to the SBI. We can go directly to the operating system. So it, it will do a context switch, see, okay, it was either 32, 33, 34, or 35. So it's one of these PCI devices that did it. And then what we can do is we can narrow that down and say, okay, which one of you did this? And whenever we do that, one of these capabilities that we saw here was the ISR capability, which stands for interrupt service routine. And so if you look here, there's two ways we can get an interrupt. Either the queue has changed, that's when the device has put something into that device queue, also known as the used ring. So it puts something in there, it's going to set that bit to one. The other way we can get an interrupt is if the device configuration has changed. Those are really the only two ways we can get it. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this. Now to acknowledge that we actually saw the interrupt, we actually have to read that bit. So we read from the queue interrupt, actually we can just read here. And remember that's a bar plus an offset and that will be in memory address where this is located. And whenever we read from that memory address, we have essentially acknowledged it at the PCI level. So once again, if you think back to how this is all going to work, the plick, we do a plick claim. It will give us 32, 33, 34, or 35. Then we go over to the PCI. We hand it off and say, hey, one of you did this, figure it out. And it's gonna go and PCI is like, okay, that's one of my vert IO devices. So this specifically, this interrupt service routine that you're seeing on your screen is specific to vert IO. So then what we do is we say, okay, which one of you caused it? And all we have to do is read Q interrupt. If that interrupt is one, we know that is what caused the interrupt. And so if that caused the interrupt, we can actually look at the used ring, the device ring and see what it finished. And remember in the used elements, we have an ID and a length. The ID is gonna be the descriptor that it just got done servicing. The length is the number of bytes that it's written somewhere. After that, we're going to do a click complete and the interrupt now has been serviced and we're good to go from there. And then we can make more requests or something like that. So all in all, that is how we're going to communicate with these devices. So once again, we have a descriptor table. It looks like this. This is the structure of one element in a descriptor table. Remember the table size is based on the queue size in the PCI common configuration. And once again, that's negotiable. Very first thing we usually do is read from it. So I've got some pseudocode at the bottom here where I don't even read from it, but generally you wanna read from it just to make sure that you're not exceeding the maximum here. So the queue size, I'm just setting it to, in this case, eight. You can set it to whatever. Once again, you probably should read it and take what it gives you. So generally think like the block device, it's by default 1024 or something like that. But you can make it smaller so that you're not using so much memory. Because remember, these have to stay resident throughout all the operating system, no matter what you do. Now you can move these if you want to, but while you're moving it, nothing can be done with the block device or any of the deferred IO devices, whichever ones you're moving. Okay, so that's how you're going to manage the queue size. Remember, the queue size tells us how many descriptors are in one table. And once again, whenever we talk about the ring, 
This U16 that this ring is, whenever we set this ring equal to something, that is the descriptor index of what we're trying to pass off to the device. This index right here is the value of the subscript. It's saying, okay, this is the element of the ring. So essentially we do it, we say, all right, let's pop that into the ring and then notify the device. It's going to read our ring and say, okay, you told me to go look at descriptor index 10, which was our previous example. Let me service this. After it's done servicing it, it pops something into the device ring, the used ring, and it tells you the ID of the descriptor, in this case 10, as well as the number of bytes that it wrote, and then it will trigger and interrupt through the plick. And once again, we do a plick claim and all that sort of stuff that we just covered several times. So there you have it. That's how we're going to communicate with a Vert IO device. Thank you for watching.